Oh. Hi everyone. Okay, I'm just waiting for people to come in and I'm just gonna keep adjusting to get everything situated. I'm a little bit late. I'm sorry for that. So if anybody comes on, we'll see. It was announced on Facebook and uh, Instagram. So we'll see if anybody jumps on. I have a watery eye that won't stop watering. I can't see anything. Uh, okay, who's joining me? Uh, I'm not Donna Matthews. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually talking about Donna Matthews trial her murder trial she's being sentenced tomorrow so that's what I'm here to discuss today I have a watery eye and for some reason so just bear with me as I deal I need to get my glasses on too so I can see what I'm doing but thank you for joining me um I'm going to get started here because I am running a little bit behind. Um, tomorrow, if you've been following me at all, hi. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I have a playlist for Donna Matthews murder trial. And just so everybody knows, yes, I do know my shirt's inside out. I'm, st I'm trying to start a new trend. I'm, I'm bringing back the inside out shirt. <laughs> Is it working? Probably not. All right, so I am live in Arizona, and I'm no longer in Wisconsin. So unfortunately, tomorrow I will not be able to go to Donna's sentencing. I don't think I would be welcome there anyway, because I have been ousted by the circle of friends. Nice to meet you, too. Um, I've been ousted by Donna's friends for the last video that I made. Nice to meet you. Um, for the last video that I made regarding Donna and how I will not be supporting her appeal for being convicted for first degree homicide. And I explained all of the reasonings of why I wasn't going to be supporting her and um, in that video. So feel free to watch that afterwards. But in the meantime, I wanna let you know what's been going on what's going to be happening tomorrow and what possibly is going to be happening uh, tomorrow as well, but also what is going to be happening on my channel regarding Donna Matthews. So first, let me get into tomorrow. Tomorrow, Donna Matthews is going to be sentenced for first degree homicide. And there was no real question whether she was guilty of murder or not. She confessed it. She said she did it. So there's like no guilty, not guilty verdict on that. The thing that Donna was fighting was uh, for self-defense. And we know that the jury came in very, very quickly after they went to deliberate. They came back within an hour and made the decision that Donna was guilty. So with that, a lot of people who are friends with Donna got really upset about it and thought, oh, they just wanted the free pizza and then just decided to go back in and wanted to get out of there quickly because they had been there for two weeks with the trial. However, that's not true. And I know a lot of her friends are really angry with me about this and they really don't understand, you know, why the jurors came back so quickly they really did feel like you know they weren't really invested in Donna's well-being or the truth or any of those things again please excuse me because my eye is watering really really bad I'm sitting outside so if you hear some outside noises that's what's going on as well so and you'll probably see some background stuff going on in my apartment which is why I'm trying to do this so anyway <laughs> um so, hi, Brian. 
I'm good. I'm um, in the middle of talking about my friend's murder trial and she's being sentenced tomorrow and my eyes watering like crazy. Okay, so let me first of all tell you that just before I left, I know, right? I feel like it, it's like my eyes water really bad. I tried to put on false eyelashes and they really messed with me. So I had to take them off real quick and pff, I ripped my eye off basically. <laughs> So, um, anyway, anything gets near my eye, it starts to water, it's my age, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. Okay, so let me get back to Donna. Um, I am being ousted by the Circle of Friends, and I will tell you that right before I moved here to Arizona, I got a text message from one of the girls, and I was basically told that if I have a soul and believe in God, please stop using Donna for YouTube hits. Um, the reality is, is that I'm not using Donna for YouTube hits. Originally, I started doing the videos about Donna to support her. And no one seemed to have a problem with that when I was writing the blogs. When I first, when this first started, I was writing blogs in support of Donna. I was getting a lot of people to stand behind her and pray for her. And Donna and I were talking via phone conversation. She was calling Collect. I was sending her money so she could call me and talk to me. And she was sending me letters from jail. So um, this girl then said, you haven't even been friends with her for blank amount of time. But yet Donna, you know, was contacting me. This was not you know, anything that I was doing uh, for any reason to get attention to me. Donna was begging me to get her story out. And because I believed in her at the time, I did it for her. So for anyone to come at me and say that I'm doing this for YouTube hits is ridiculous because originally I started out with a blog two years ago. And since I started doing YouTube, it just seemed to make sense to do this on YouTube and let people know because Donna has many friends around the world that are watching this story and can't be here and no one's telling that story accurately and from a friend's perspective so that's what I was trying to do. I've been criticized now for doing that because I've turned the other way because I found out the truth, because I found out that I was being lied to. And so I was told that God have mercy on my soul for what I'm doing to Donna. But God have mercy on Donna's soul for murdering Michael Guyon, period. That's what she did. She committed murder. She had been plotting it for months. I don't really know any other way to defend that. Okay, if it were self-defense in the moment, I could understand. Had she gone temporary insanity, I could have understood that. So I'm not doing this for YouTube hits. I could care less about the numbers. I care more about getting the truth out because I am a truth seeker. I will always tell the truth. So when it came to the Donna Matthews trial, I was under false impressions brought to me information that was given to me by friends and by Donna herself. And I went with that. I followed my instincts to try to help her. She begged me, begged me. Can you hear me, Linda? She begged me to write those articles she would be begging me to do this if it were for her side. But now that I'm not on her side, you can't come at me and say, okay, shut up now, because that's not how this works. I'm now in a seat where I'm flip-flopper, okay? Because I was defending Donna and now I'm not. And so now I'm in this position where I'm not gaining any YouTube views simply because of me talking about Donna Matthews. I'm not. This is my story now because I was the one who initially defended her and stood behind her. And now I'm the one who looks like the fool. 
and people are noticing that and they're contacting me and saying, see, I told you months ago, I told you a year ago, I told you two years ago, but you wouldn't listen to me and they're right. And I have to come back and I have to apologize to those people and say, you're right, I didn't listen to you. So there were numerous people who contacted me two years ago about this and tried to tell me the truth about what was really going on and I refused to listen because of what Donna was telling me and what Donna's friends were telling me, which were all lies. And for Donna's friends who are still standing behind her, behind this self-defense, you're crazy. I don't know what you're thinking. I don't really care to know what you're thinking, to be quite honest. Um, I just think that if you really love Donna the way that I do, and you can tell me all you want that I haven't been friends with her for blank amount of time, it doesn't matter. Uh, she's still my friend. She's always been my friend. She helped me through a very difficult time. So I still care about Donna. I care very deeply about Donna. I'm very concerned for her well-being. I'm very concerned about what's going to possibly happen to her tomorrow. Um, she could go to prison for life. I mean, she had been plotting this for months and months and led him to Hawaii to try to murder him there. So I, how can I stand behind that? How can anyone who's a friend of hers stand behind that and not say, Donna, this was wrong and you really are getting what you deserve and you shouldn't have done this in the first place. That's the reality. She shouldn't have done this in the first place. But to say, God have mercy on my soul or to, you know, say that I'm not really a believer because um, I'm not, you know, standing behind Donna anymore, that's ridiculous. I do stand behind Donna. I just don't condone what she did. I just don't believe that what she did was self-defense. So what that's going to lead me to now is tomorrow she will be sentenced. I don't know what that's going to be. I'm not there, so I have no idea. And I don't think the judge is going to go very light on her because the judge was pretty hard on her. Now, let me tell you that I have been doing a lot of research on some things that I've been missing out. Um, I was also scolded because I wasn't there for all the pretrial stuff. And I will remind you ladies who were a part of this whole group when I was in it that nobody kept me up to date. But nobody told me what was going on. Nobody was giving me that information to go to those pretrials. So to sit back and judge me for not going is really disgusting because you never told me. Otherwise, I would have been there. And to say that I wasn't there through the whole trial is absolutely true. And neither were a lot of the other women. One woman got up and left every time I walked in. And most of the time, Linda, you weren't there either. You were out shopping for necklaces for everybody. So, you know, to condemn me for not being there every day when I couldn't be because I have a family and I have other things going on in my life, I tried to do the best that I could to be there every day that I could. But there were just some days I couldn't. And one of those days I was in jail with Donna. So there. <laughs> um... But um, you can't judge me just because I wasn't there. I heard enough to know that I was lied to, that I was manipulated, and I think that the testimony given on both defense and prosecution were damning. Donna's testimony was damning to herself. She showed absolutely no remorse being up there. Um, the only thing she cried about is her claim of being raped. Again, I know Donna from before. I know a lot of things about Donna and I'm not going to bash her on YouTube and I'm not going to bring any of that past stuff up of what I do know about her and um, how, you know, some of this is her behavior. But I won't get into that. Um, but I'm not surprised. Let's put it that way. In fact, when I found out that she murdered Guyan, my initial reaction was that she murdered her ex-husband because of 
all the anger and turmoil I saw with that situation because I was right there by her side through a lot of that. So, um, the other thing that I want to talk about is I am in contact with one of the jurors and actually I have talked to her today and I am, I sent her a list of questions and information and kind of my side of the feeling of things and asking her some questions and she will be responding back to me and answering those questions. Now, when I will be able to post that video, I'm not entirely sure. Remember, I'm in Arizona. It's like 105 degrees here today. But look, I'm not sweating. No humidity. But I am thirsty. Okay, so I am in contact with this juror and all the questions were sent to her today. And then I'm going to be compiling all that information and I will be putting together a video about that so that people can get a real sense of what was in the jurors' minds. What were they thinking? What were they talking about in that hour? Yeah, it was a short hour. Yeah, it was really, really quick, but that's always a bad sign if it's really, really quick that, um, they already knew she was guilty a long time ago. I don't really think they needed much more evidence. I really think the closing arguments that lasted almost two days were probably pretty disturbing to the jurors, but I, I guess I'll find out soon um, how they felt about that. Now, I've been reading some information on um, online from the Kenosha News, from the Gateway Network as well, and found out that there were some things that were not brought to the jurors' attention that were withheld and things of that nature. So I will, I have asked those questions, um, just so you know, because I want to know, you know, what was going on behind closed doors and what we don't know that they were asking for what was not given to them and how they feel about not having that information if it would have swayed them a different way or not. So I will have that information for you as soon as it is returned to me. Unfortunately, I was supposed to meet with her before I left, but I didn't really have a lot of time and a lot of things were going on so quickly. Um, so right now we're doing everything via email and chat. And I'm just trying to get the perspective from them. Now, the other thing I want to do is I do want to reach out to Frank. Um, if you're watching this, Frank, um, I would like to talk with you and also get your thoughts. Now, I know you've been strongly opinionated about this process because I believe Guyan was your friend, as Linda had explained to me and told me a lot of things so she had told me that I maybe need to investigate Guyan, which I would like to do. I didn't know who Frank was at the time. So Frank, you've been commenting below for quite some time. You've been commenting on my blog and on my videos and you and I came to an agreement not too long ago about some things. So I would actually like to be in contact with you and maybe get your thoughts and feelings um, on this and maybe get to know Michael Guyon and who he was. Um, one of the things that we learned throughout this, and I don't know if a lot of you know this, but one of the things that was found in Guyon's home when the police came in to investigate the murder scene is that they actually found a bag they called it a creepy bag and in that bag was duct tape rope mace things that you would probably use if you were going to kidnap somebody or whatever so they also found a gun it was unloaded but there was ammunition in the same bag with the gun so everything kind of looked like there was a potential for some kind of weird thing that could have happened but that was rejected by the judge to be presented in court the ex-girlfriend jamie holmes i think her name was um she also was not allowed to really give her testimony of what guyan was really like to her 
She was only restrained to yes or no questions. She could only answer yes or no. And so that was very limiting for Donna too. So, you know, for me, I feel like as I'm learning more information, I just feel like the whole thing was hokey. I feel like everything was just a big disaster from the very beginning, from the very beginning. Um, from the moment that Donna was realized she was in this type of relationship and just didn't get out to the end here where we find out how the judge would not let certain information in or the prosecution wasn't letting certain things in. I just find the whole thing to be completely unfair. Uh, a lot of injustice going on for Donna because even if Donna is guilty, okay, I do feel that all the facts, all the evidence should have been presented. It should have been presented. Who knows what could have happened if that were the case, if we had known everything. But as I sat through the trial, I realized that there were so many gaps and holes in everyone's stories that you just didn't know how to fill it in. That is one of the questions I'm asking this juror to as well. I want to know, like, did you feel like you weren't getting the whole story on either side? Because I found it, re and I was talking to Donna for a year and a half. And so when I went to trial, to hear all this stuff, the pieces weren't coming together. Sorry about that. I lost you there for a second. So hopefully this won't be too crazy um, once it's rewatched. But one of the things that I found is that the storyline wasn't complete. The timeline wasn't complete. The, the full story wasn't told. And I found that to be completely odd and strange on all levels because if you're trying to defend something or you're trying to prosecute something, the whole story should be told so that there's a full picture that the jury could get and judge from there rather than just bits and pieces and you're only hearing part of the truth or part of the lies or whatever. So I'm torn a lot about this case because I think a lot of this case was mishandled by the police, by the judge, by the defending lawyers, by the prosecution. I just don't think anybody got the full story. I don't think anybody really knows. And if a lot of evidence was taken out then that's a huge problem. That's a huge problem for our justice system. Um, that judge has no right to say that those things that could have helped Donna were not allowed into the trial and the jury wasn't allowed to see. Now, would that have changed things? I don't know. I can't say, but I, as a truth seeker, as someone who believes in the truth, I think that all the facts should have been presented. And it looked very sketchy, the things that Guyan had in his bag and were sitting around. I mean, that's just not normal things. And then, you know, for the prosecution to come back and say, oh, he could have went camping. That could have been for camping gear. Who carries rope, duct tape, and mace, and all this stuff that looks like kidnapping stuff, you know, for camping. Okay, no. No. Um, I just find the whole situation odd. Um, so to say that was inadmissible is ridiculous. So I'm very bothered by that. Um, but again, I did miss some days, I will admit. There were some days I wasn't there. Um, particularly when I was in jail, I wasn't able to go. I went, um, on the last day for the closing. And so I was there to hear enough though, to know that a lot of things that I was told was not true and not accurate. So, sorry about that.
Anyway, so I'm gonna go. I just wanted to touch base with you and let you know Donna's gonna be sentenced tomorrow. We'll find out more and I will kind of keep you posted when I get more information from this juror and I get some information from the juror about what was going on behind closed doors, what their thoughts were, what her thoughts were. And I'm gonna go from there and I'm gonna try to reach out to Frank and see if I can also talk to him about Guyan. Maybe we should get to know Guyan. You know, Linda, that's a great idea. I should get to know Guyan, you know? So, cause I didn't. And the truth is a lot of people didn't. A lot of people didn't know him. That's what's so weird. Like all the things that happened. Did anybody see it? Nope. Did anybody hear it? Nope. So it's all hearsay, which really did not help Donna's case at all, unfortunately. So to say, you know, one coworker had to kick him out of the lot, eh, that's once out of all two, four years, whatever, you know, she was claiming abuse. If you only have one incident, that's really not gonna help your case. So I'm gonna end here and I wanna thank you for watching. Um, I'm not gonna ask you to subscribe or like, I'm just not, cause this isn't about hits. This is about just getting information out there and informing you of what's going on and what's happening and what I know and what I don't know and what I will know soon. So when I know, you will know. All right, thank you so much and God bless you and God bless Donna Matthews.